you don't take a loan just to have money in your bank account, but you actually take the loan as a payment mechanism, a payment method. And in order for a loan to become a payment method, you need technologies that will drive this transaction. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Leomitech, sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Opus Labs, Synergy Global, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, Birthright Excel, Serona Partners, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Let's talk about Blender with Dr. Galaviv, the founder and CEO of Blender Financial Technologies. He holds a PhD in physics from Nottingham University, UK, and is a specialist in quantum optics. Gal has over a decade of experience as an entrepreneur and venture capitalist. I have to start with the cat out of the bag, uh, you know, PhD in uh, nanophysics, uh, and not quantum just a PhD, optics. but... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> quite, quite a bit of, uh, of of spending time there, and then today you're you're running Blender, uh, uh, you know, a public company here in Tasse, and you're you know doing some phenomenal things in the in the lending world and changing consumer behavior when it comes to the ability of people to to receive funding that they may need for various reasons um, through a single mobile app across the world. How does one make this transition? And obviously there is a much deeper answer than the simple question. How does one make the transition from physics to fintech? From, yeah, from, from actually becoming a scientist to move to the business world and from business world to, to actually to, uh, to fintech, it's, it's, it was quite really, it's quite a transition, but I think that it's uh, mainly relates to, to our passions as people. Like for me, What's drive us is a big thing. Um, like in the world of physics, we try all the time to explore and to understand. And really, I think one of the most important stuff when, when you do physics is you actually understand that you don't understand almost, is that you understand almost nothing. And that's okay not to understand. And it's okay not to know, but you try to find out the drivers that drive people and drive systems. And in the world of business, I think it's quite the same, especially in fintech companies that is very fast growing. You all the time need to think of your clients, what drives them, what would bring them to, to use your product and how can your product be better for them as well. Mm -hmm. And so walk me through a little bit about, you know, you, you, you as yourself, you know, as an entrepreneur, as an executive, as an academic, you know, how, how, how did you grow into these fields in their separate ways? So I, uh, I started in few levels. So I do sports for many, many years. I raced in sailing uh, for, for ages. Um, got to sail in Australia and European championships and uh, things like that. And uh, I'm a season runner as well. I think that many hours of my week I spend while running. Um, it's one of the things that helps me to clear my mind, my mind pretty well. And, um, I started physics, I think through a passion. Uh, I, 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 for many years I wanted to, to do, to do that. And when I started the undergrad, I quite f fairly fast, I understood that I want to go for a master and I want to specialize in quantum optics. That was a very, very special field. Um, in the masters I did, uh, I built actually the first quantum bits that was at the time at room temperature atom. So I took a system that cost over $5 million, made it to less than $20,000. And, um, and then I started a PhD and I was accepted to a phenomenal lab in, in the UK that uh, was doing atom chips. Uh, it's, uh, it means that we actually trapped atoms really next to a golden, beautiful golden chip, very close to it, reduced our temperature to the absolute zero. Absolute zero means that there is no movement. And when there is no movement, they actually become quantum creatures. So they live in a completely different world. They can be here and be there in parallel and, um, and behave like a, like a quantum creature. And you can really take photos of them or you can speak with them using electromagnetic fields. 
and get the results of their behavior. But in parallel to all that and to ver- various experiments that we did from things that are the early days of quantum computers to what happened in the proximity of a black hole and, and the Hawking energy is that I was working, uh, I was all the time fluid around the world of uh, investments and venture capital. The first startup I built uh, was at 2004, I think, something like that. It was in medical devices. And then uh, I moved to investments a few years later. And that was all in parallel to the studies. And I, we, I built a company that was actually investing in venture capital uh, as in the bridging state. Uh, we had involvement in 13 different companies. We actually wow. passed the 2008, which was quite hectic time for investors. No, I uh, imagine. I, I must say that seven of the companies succeeded and uh, we made quite a lot of uh, capital in that, uh, in this in investment venture. But when I finished the PhD in England at the time and we came back in 2012 to Israel, I, there, is, there was this passion to build something. And uh, from this passion, Blender came, and we are a group, a wonderful group of founders. It's myself, it's my brother, which is uh, coming from the technology unit in uh, uh, of the of the Intelligent Corp, and uh, another friend of mine that did together with me the physics studies, the master, the undergrad and masters, and was doing quant- uh, complex systems. So this is Barack, and Boaz is my brother, and together we actually started Blender which is very different and unique actually from what we thought in the beginning and is uh, quite, uh, you know, it's our company, but we feel that it's quite a remarkable and fast growing company that uh, all the time right. for so, the next things in the market. To, to, so, so, you know, given the context of, of who you are, you know, as a person who, you know, obviously loves challenges, loves to, 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 to take on these extreme, you know, activities and, and excel at what you do, you're, you're looking right now at the world of lending and, and the banking world and, and how people, you know, get capital. Um, and, and it's, a, it's not trivial. It's a, you know, it's an, you know, lo- loans have been around, uh, you know, one of the, you know, for, for centuries and uh, thousands of years. Where are we at today in the world of loans? Even before we talk about Blender, how do you see the world of loans before you? It's not just the world of lending. I think it's the whole world of finance and fintech. I think that this world is completely changing now and it's rebuilt from scratch uh, in all the aspects, in all the channels, in all the directions. Um, And banking are reshaped on a daily basis. And I think that what's happening now is a process of segregation and actually becoming very good that each of these companies become very good at specific channels uh, from banks as we know them, like all type banks that are trying to do all in one and actually nothing is really good to become very specific companies that are doing something very, very well. And we see it in all the channels. So if we go to trading, we have Robinhood and we have eToro. And if we have current accounts, so we see Revolut and N26. And if you go to buy now, pay later. So you, of course, so you have Klarna and Affirm and you also have Blender there. And if you have deposits, so you have raising and deposit solution. So suddenly we see financial institutions, many of them holds banking license, but they are very specific. And they bring a true value for the client at what they do. And I think this is one of the important aspects here. That this uh, being very specific, very well focused and bring exact, the exact product. Now, when we get to the world of lending, um, in lending, there was a, a massive change. A massive change. If we start to look at like Lending Club, Prosper, etc., that were very much, you know, get unsecured loan and do something with it, that, that is over. That is over. Now we are, now we are in, the, in the stage of co- let's control our cash flow. Let's control our cash flow. Let's bring products that actually help people to uplift themselves. And that mm-hmm. means that 
uh, a loan need to be specific for a cause. You don't take a loan just to have money in your bank account, but you actually take the loan as a payment mechanism, a payment method. And in order for a loan to become a payment method, you need technologies that will drive this transaction at light speed, really, because the client is now in the website, in his e-commerce website, is now in the shop, and he needs to pay and live. And for that, mm-hmm. you need tons of technology around, tons. And uh, why, so, so Gal, why, why do existing solutions not, not allow for that? Because loan, there are various loan mechanisms, you know, primarily through banking institutions. Um, the, you know, they understand the purpose of the loan. They understand perhaps why people need it. And they, they have the capital to, to give it. Why, why is that not enough? I think that there is, so there are two vectors here. Um, one is the understanding of the client and provide the client the exact products that he needed at the exact time. And the second one is the enabler, like to, to have the technology and to have the infrastructure that would allow you to create instant, instant transaction that is actually included risk. And that is a very important point because to do a money remittance, it's really easy. You send money from one person to another, you have some, you, you need to check, of course, that both of them are genuine people. There are problems around that, but there is an instant transaction. When you provide a loan, you actually give someone's money, you give, you give money to someone. You actually don't even send the money to the, to the person. You send the money to a shop that is standing at or that is browsing at. And you presume that you, you will get the money back in 24 payments mm-hmm. from a person that you never met that can be in a different country. And you need to have a lot of technology around it really to understand that there is a genuine person on the other side and what is the risk level of the other, of the person that is on the other side. And I think to understand the risk level and what is his probability of default, will it, will it right. be or not? For you? Yeah, that's the issue. And it's complicated. So, so looking at the complicated situation, you know, there's a lot of different challenges that you're presenting here. One thing that I'm hearing here is obviously about trust and how do you create a, a mechanism of trust, primarily on the the loaner, right? The person who's providing the loan um, that has now to to wait for the capital to perhaps come back and, and hopefully not default. How, how do you see this consumer behavior shifting? You know, if we're looking at it at a grand scheme of things, you know, now you're saying we as independent people can actually be, you know, can actually provide loans and not just banks. What, what, how, how do you think through this consumer shift? So first of all, Blender is becoming a bank across European mm-hmm. bank. This is, uh, this is the next stage of our evolution. So yes, we become a bank because at the end, uh, the cost of capital of banks is the lowest in the market. We, you get deposits and therefore you can provide the best products for our client. And price is one of, uh, one of the questions of our client. Like, where do I get? It's not the main question, by the way. We were quite surprised, but price is not the main question. The main question is the simplicity of the transaction. Um, mm-hmm. and I think that, uh, so, so you need to have, exactly the product that creates the trust, the trust, which is the big part of the, of the thing. And in parallel, you need to, to have the infrastructure to, to allow the transaction and why banks right. do that so much. Uh, I don't think that they can be there so easily. It's, mm. it's completely different infrastructure, completely different DNA. KYC that is not, that is immediate in few seconds. Yeah. You know, to open a banking now, account today, it's take you three weeks, not a few seconds. Right. Now, now, God, how does technology help facilitate the de-risking of, of such a situation? Because this is obviously the big question. And, you know, a, a lot of people are talking about the, the credit score system of the U.S., which is the default mechanism for deciding the validity of a, of a person person's ability to repay their loans. Um, but, but obviously, that's one parameter out of many possible ones. So how, how does technology help you leverage the, the, a variety of parameters to make a decision here? Yeah, so, so when we looked and when we built our technology, and now it's a technology that ran over half a million people now, 
So we can really build statistical models, but at the early days, uh, or when we enter to a new country, always there is this question. So actually what you check. So it's relates to, in our perspective, in our view, there are, first of all, is the anti-fraud part. So to understand who the person is really is. And on the other side is to understand what is the risk level of the client. Um, right. So the anti-fraud part, we, we, we built a system that is pretty like, we call it the iron dome of anti-fraud. So it combines from hundreds of small checks and we look at the correlations between these small checks and this, and it's really strange things that are being checked over there from things that we found on the web of the people that all automated, it takes less than, than a second, but we accumulate all that together and that's give us a quite good picture on the, on whether the person is genuine person and uh, where he come from and many parameters about this person. And then to the other, and now we move to the other part. The other part relates to understanding the risk level of the client and right. what is his probability of default. And there you use mainly uh, databases. So you, you wisely said that there are credit scoring databases, uh, various ones. So of course we check them. We take actually the raw data. Uh, we don't, we never trust the scores. So we will always take a lot of the raw data and analyze it ourselves, but there are more. And today there is the open banking and today you can actually get access to all the transactions that the person is doing in his current account and you can mm. analyze them and you can really see his behavior, his financial behavior. And that allows the models really to be much more accurate. And you can also find which type of person stand in front of you and to understand if you want him to be your client or not, because finance, if fintech or this type of fintech is very strange, you actually, it's not that you just need to gain the client, but you actually, right. to, after you gain the client, you, you need to understand if you want to give him the product or not. It's the, I think it's the only field in the world that you actually, you know, you pay the marketing cost, the client gets to you, who wants to do the purchase? Uh, wait, 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 I'm not sure that I want to sell. <laughs> and that's, that's, and that's one of the problems of fintech in general. Uh, in, in, incredible. Now, now, if we look at the world uh, where, where Blender is, you know, you're, you're a leading bank and you're, and you're able to provide your services so that, you know, you really are creating this global network of, of lenders and loaners. What, what is the impact, you know, in the terms of impact of this? So how, how does this change, you know, how does this move the needle in terms of society or how does this impact people's lives potentially? Yeah. So if it's more a vision question of, yeah. So in one hand, we actually say Blender is becoming a cross European bank and right. fintech banks that provides, but what this bank provides, it provides lending. And we mm -hmm. focus mainly, by the way, on two channels on car lending and buy now pay data. These mm -hmm. are the two channels. And after that, I will explain. And on the other side, we have the depositors. And actually, we don't believe that depositors should get a negative return for their deposits. You know, they provide us the money. We use this money in order to, why they should get a negative return for that? It's not reasonable. Uh, so, right. so actually, we have these networks that you speak of here is actually, if the bank is very focused and is very focused on a profitable channel, we can accommodate both. We can give from one, hand, one hand to our depositors the good returns that they're looking for and for uh, borrowers, good pricing in one hand, but very fast and very well managed uh, process, a uh, borrowing process that would allow them to actually to do their purchase. And a purchase can be a car and a purchase can be a, a computer or an iPhone. It doesn't matter. Right. I think that, that makes a lot of sense. And Gal, I have to say that, you know, it's a, to, to me, it's always exciting meeting people and, and hearing their stories about how they transition from different fields and, and people that are driven by challenges and curiosity. And I think that, you know, when I think about leadership, this is one of the, those unique qualities. And not obviously your journey is just a, a, and putting that as, at, a, at a center focal point. And, and I really appreciate your time and your effort. And, uh, and I can't wait to continue following Blender's journey. And, uh, and at the end, you know, I'm thinking about people who, who need the 
these loans. And, and like you mentioned before, people don't take out a loan to have money in the bank. They take out a loan because they need it. And in today's volatile world and in today's world where, where at, at the end money makes the world go around and, and is an enabler for a lot of things, um, really you're providing opportunities for people. And so uh, it, it sounds like you're making a, a lot of positive impact and the company will continue doing that. So thank you very, very much and uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.